Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Let's stand and sing together. That's the good news. Amen. You can have a seat. Well, good morning. It's great to see everyone here this morning. Welcome to all the visitors and everyone that's watching online and everyone that's here this morning. Just got a couple uh, quick announcements. Uh, this Sunday is, uh, today is Benevolence uh, Sunday, which means uh, benevolence means a, des a desire to do good to others. And at United Covenant Church here, we are committed to helping those in need. So if, uh, if you know someone in need, um, let pastor know. And there's little uh, brown envelopes in the backs of your chairs, and you can put uh, your donations in there. Um, also, on Wednesday, June 1st, they're having an event in Amory called Hope Alive. And it's June 1st from 5.30 to 8. There's going to be food and music and sharing and fun for the whole family. Uh, the food's going to be free, and we're going to uh, bring our food trailer there and help uh, serve some of the food there, so burgers and brats and hot dogs. So if you're interested 
in helping at all with that, um, there's a sign up in Sign Up Central for that. And also, Clear Lake Community, Community Vacation Bible School will be held here at church um, June 12th through the 15th from 6 to 8 p.m. And parents, you can register your children uh, for this on our website at unitedcovchurch.org and just click on the yellow button that says register for VBS. Um, and if you want to volunteer for this event too, there's a sign-up sheet in Sign-Up Central. And if you'd like to uh, give to the ministry here at United Covenant Church, you can give online at our website, or there is a brown box in the back that you can uh, put your offerings in there. And also, if you have any prayer requests, um, Tuesday mornings, there's a group of us that meet every Tuesday morning, and we'll pray over those uh, requests. So if you have a prayer request, uh, you can also put that in the brown box in the back. And that's all I have for you this morning, so you can stand up and greet your neighbor.
with a melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone and I'm no when we're between an army and an ocean uh, and it's a fearful situation we just uh, praise you because we know that you've got a plan for us and something that we can't even see and uh, there's just no way that that we can have any idea what you have planned for us and you opened up the sea and uh, you let those Israelites walk right through on dry land and you want to do the same for us too and so just pray that you take our fears away and I trust that you have a plan for us that's just so much more than we could ever imagine. And we just thank you for that promise. Amen. The first scripture reading today is from Psalm 119, <clears throat> verses 9 through 16. How can a young person stay pure? By obeying your word, I have tried hard to find you. Don't let me wander from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I praise you, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. I have recited aloud all the regulations you have given us. I have rejoiced in your laws as much as in riches. 
I will study your commandments and reflect on your ways. I will delight in your decrees and not forget your word. The second reading is from Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 29. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real authority, quite unlike their teachers of religious law. Thank you so much, Katie. Um, at this time, uh, this past week, by the way, we had our, um, our conference annual meeting, and that was held at Minnehaha Academy um, in Minneapolis, and Terry Silverberg was our delegate, or one of our delegates. Leah and I were the other delegates, but we had a great time, and um, so we're part of a larger, we're not just ourselves, you know, thankfully, we're connected to other churches, and um, so we're part of a thing called the Northwest Conference, and so there's other covenant churches in our area, but anyway, Terry's going to share just a little bit. Good morning. Um, first of all, I want to thank you for sending me to it, and if, I just have to say, if any of you have an opportunity to go to the conference me annual meeting or the national me meeting, go to it. It's, uh, it's not a boring business meeting. It's full of worship. It's full of praise. It's full of seeing what God is doing through us, through our denomination. Um, the theme was a glimpse of hope. That's not hope of the world, but it's hope in what God has promised is a certainty to come. Uh, we heard several reports of things that we're doing that we could never do alone, we could never do as a church. Uh, we started several new churches. During the pandemic, we started several churches. We continued to support churches that have been started before through this pandemic. Uh, we have specialized ministry reaching out to minorities in the Twin Cities and around, and, and around the, the um, Northwest Conference. Uh, a Covenant Ability Network, which I was not familiar with it, but it's a a network that we have for housing people that need special help as, as they grow. We had our camping ministry, which we're all familiar with, but do you realize that our, not our, not the denomination, but just our conference maintains and operates five camps. You know, Lake Beauty is one of them. We have our uh, discipleship program, Solid Rock. So these are things that we could never do on our own or a single church. So just was shows to us, and to me, demonstrates to me what we can do together as a denomination, as a, confer as an, a conference. As the pastor said, the meeting was at Minnehaha Academy, which is owned and operated by the Northwest Conference. There's one very emotional report that we had, and I don't know how many of you remember this or not, but on August 2nd, 2017, maintenance was going on at Minnehaha Academy. There was a gas explosion. The structure collapsed. It was gone. There was parts of the building where walls were still standing, but uninhabitable. Two people died, and several people were injured severely. Through this, the report, you know, it was called a glimpse of hope, but what I saw was a glimpse of the cross and the grave and the joy of resurrection. The next days, they started to plan, and because school was starting within a month, they found temporary housing for the school. They opened the day after Labor Day, after going through this horrific accident. Um, and 18 months later, 
they opened the new school, which is where we had our meeting over the last few days. And if you guys are ever in Minneapolis, I encourage you to take a look because that's what we support as a conference. And it's, it's not like any high school I ever went to, I can tell you that. <laughs> it was quite a report. Um, we elected a new superintendent, uh, superintendent-elect, Kara Stromberg. She's going to be replacing the soon retired Mark Stromberg. Uh, Mark was clear to point out they're not related. Uh, he said her line of Strombergs come from royalty in Sweden. He said his came from a bunch of horse thieves. So, <laughs> uh, My only comment about her, I looked at her and you know, I said, boy, she looks really young. And then Pastor Dan pulled me aside and he corrected me. He said, you know, Terry, to you, everybody looks young. <laughs> But I was at the question and answer session with Kara, or Kara, I should say, and it was both about biblical questions and societal questions. And just a summary, there, there are many answers, but what I took away from it, she stands firm on the traditional covenant wisdom of where is it written. And she also stands firm that marriage is between a man and a woman. So, <laughs> so reporting back to you, what I saw at the conference, I think our conference is strong. It's being led by biblically strong people who are focusing on the word of God. And I think, um, and it wasn't, there was no meeting on this. The only thing, takeaway I took was one weakness possibly, I saw, you know, between the lines, between talking with people is churches aren't able to get pastors. Having pastors to be to come to churches is becoming difficult, and there's, as a result, there's pastor burnout. So that's there was no that's something that I just took from you know talking to people and reading between the lines. So if there's any young people out there wondering what you should be doing, what you should do with your life, consider a life of serv of service as a pastor. So thank you, Jim. Pastor. Thank you so much, Terry. And, and we really were encouraged. We're heading in the right direction. And we just praise God for that. And, um, but I'm not burnt out, and I'm not going anywhere. So. <laughs> just so good to be here. And it's so good when God is raising up young people. It is just so exciting. And so I love Confirmation Sunday. And um, so Confirmation is, for those of you that might not know what it is, basically it's kind of a Bible class. And um, we go through the Old and New Testaments, and we want our young people to have a, just an understanding of our Christian faith. What is it? Where is it written? You know, what's going on? What, what does God want us to do? And, and so that's really what confirmation is all about. And it's just so good to be able to, to be with young people and to, um, to help them grow in their faith. And I just have to say that we are very much blessed in our church with excellent teachers. So we have Gretchen Wahlberg that teaches our first year confirmation, uh, Old Testament, and maybe Gretchen wherever you're at, if you could, I know you don't like doing this, but she's back there standing up. God bless you, Gretchen. <clears throat> Thank you so much. And then we have Katie Elmer that teaches our New Testament class. And Katie, there she is. And, and these teachers, they are so good. They're such good teachers. We are very blessed as a church to have them, and they do a wonderful job. So we just want to honor them and say thank you to them for their hard work. They take it very seriously, and they do a, a beautiful job. Okay, so I'm going to ask our confirm confirmands to come on up here. <clears throat> and by the way, th this is a, a different thing, but just a little advertisement. on This Wednesday, we are starting a Bible 101 class. Um, if there's anybody out there that, that um, 
wants to go through the Bible and learn some of the basics of our faith and, and the Bible. That's going to start this Wednesday here at church. That's not just for young people. That's for, you know, adults. I think we've got about five signed up. But that's it. Um, it's in your bulletin what time it is. So just look at that because I'm not going to remember up here. Okay. <laughs> but um, anyway, that's kind of a, a confirmation class for for adults, it's going to be super good. Okay, so as we go through confirmation together, we learn, again, some of the basics of our faith. And one of those things that we ask is, who is God? So I'm going to ask our confirmation students, who is God? God is personal, eternal spirit, creator of the universe, father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Amen. Personal, eternal spirit, creator of the universe, father of our Lord Jesus Christ and our father. Very good. And we learn about how God created the world, how he um, made us as man and woman, um, Adam and Eve. And then, sadly, sin came into the world. So, students, what is sin? Okay, sin is all in thought, word, and deed that's contrary to the will of God. And <clears throat> because of sin, sin and death entered the world. And um, But God had a plan to redeem the world, which was prophesied about in the Old Testament and fulfilled in the New Testament. And that is that he would send his only son, the Lord Jesus, to come into the world to be the... Um, to pay the penalty for our sins and to be our substitute on the cross. And Jesus died for our sins and he rose again. So we go through the Bible and <clears throat> we, we learn, uh, again, the first year is the Old Testament. And so, students, what are the books of the Old Testament? we go the second year then we go through <clears throat> the New Testament so students what are the books of the New Testament Matthew Mark Luke John Acts Romans Verses Corinthians Galatians Ephesians Philippians Colossians First and Second Thessalonians First and Second Timothy Titus Philemon Hebrews James First and Second Peter First Second Peter John Good. Okay, and um, and then we learn about the church, and we learn about again some of the very basics of our Christian faith, and we learn among other things that all Christians, no matter if they're um, from the Evangelical Covenant Church or they're Catholic or Lutheran or Baptist or Assembly of God or whoever they might be, as Christians, we could all agree. Now, there's things that we don't agree on, probably, but there's there's some basics that we can all agree on about our Christian faith, um, and those some of those beliefs or those basic beliefs are summed up in the Apostles' Creed, and so we asked our students to memorize. The Apostles' Creed. Can you say that for the people? I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into Hades, and the third day he rose again from the dead. 
sit down for a minute, and, um, and so we've asked our students to write a statement of faith, and so the first one that's going to share with us is Levi. Levi's going to share his statement with us. Hi, my name is Levi Thayer. I chose the verse 1 Peter 2.9, but you are a chosen people a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. I chose this verse because it lets me know that we are selected by God to be his people in this world. I first asked Jesus into my heart when I was maybe four years old. I probably didn't totally understand everything when I was four, so then about three years ago at U-Turn Night at Lake Beauty, I recommitted my life to Jesus. U-Turn Night is a night at camp, and after chapel, you can turn around and go back in and talk to your counselor or staff to talk about Jesus, and maybe choose to ask Jesus into your heart. God was telling me to U-Turn, but at first, I was hesitant to go because I felt dumb. And so then, the, the group I was in walked back to our cabin, and I just felt really guilty about not going back. But I ended up going back, and it changed my life. I felt God telling me to U-Turn. When I listened to him, it really let me know that he is working in my life and that he is the way to go. Since I follow Jesus, I want my life to reflect Jesus' life and to have people see a difference in how I live compared to other people. I hope Jesus continues to reveal himself to me like he did that night at camp and that he will continue to help me grow in my faith. I would like to thank Gretchen and Katie for teaching me about the Bible and for helping me understand the Bible more. Also, I want to thank my grandparents and parents for showing me examples of how to live out your faith and to live like a Christian. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Dietrich, and I'm sharing the verse Galatians 1.10a, which says, Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? It talks about how not to think about what man thinks of you, but how God thinks of you. I'm sure most of us here could say we've struggled and or struggle with what others think of us. When I was attending a GNU's club in the school district, the room we had GNU's club in was right next to a room that had a hammock hanging from the ceiling. Whenever the offer to accept Jesus was made, I always wanted to go just because I met in that room with a hammock and I wanted to sit on it so badly that eventually I decided to accept Jesus at age four, all because of the room with the hammock. If there never was a hammock, I might have never come to Christ because of things I was going through even at age four. I've struggled and still occasionally struggle with thoughts like, you're not good enough, you've lost all your friends because you're too selfish, mean, rude, or stupid. I wasn't good enough for anyone, not my parents, no person could love me, not even God. As I fell deeper and deeper into those thoughts, Jesus appeared to me, and I got closer to him, and even when the thoughts come back, I can shove them back because Jesus has my back. Since I am following Jesus, I want to help in good news clubs and help kids that may go through the same thing as me. I want them to know Jesus has it totally under control, and you don't have to worry. Matthew 6:34 says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. God is there for you always. By the way, I never got to sit on that hammock. <laughs> Hi, I'm Addison Warner, and let me just say we both have something in common. You don't know what I'm going to say, you don't know what I'm going to say, and neither do I. <laughs> the first I chose is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, and I know I really can because I've had it happen. Now, if people look at me and watch me in my prime time, showing off all that I have in basketball, volleyball, horses, school, etc., they might think, wow. 
It comes so easy for her. But really, they don't see all the hard work and effort I put in behind the scenes and all the little prayers and asking for strength from God. Honestly, I don't handle a lot of things very easily. I'm always running, pla- running and going places. And sometimes it's just a lot to handle. And sometimes I'll even break down and cry in the middle of the sidewalk on my way to volleyball practice after track. But then I realize that God is always with me. He's always by my side, always helping me out and pulling me through those hard times, making me even stronger and being able to show all that toughness off. I look back on it now, and I realize how big of a part he is in my life. I honestly wasn't so sure about this whole getting confirmed thing and the whole believing in God sort of deal. But now that I look at it more, I belong with Christ, and I need him more than ever than I ever thought possible. God has pulled me through some really tough times recently. And let's just say it begins with guys being a teenager and the drama with it all. <laughs> He's helped me through some stuff and I didn't, that I didn't think I could get through. Anything from getting back on that horse that bucked me off real bad to somehow passing the freshman class as an eighth grade blonde girl. Y'all blondes should know how those wonderful blonde moments we have. <laughs> God is always there. Two years ago, in the year 2020, I got my first horse, Dusty Montana, and he is a tall, beautiful red roan horse. But one day we were out for a ride on my auntie's road when something small smacked him and spooked him. He started bucking really hard, and my aunt Sheena was riding him with me. I was so scared, I didn't know what to do. I fell off, I think auntie pushed me, (laughs) and I hit the hard gravel road. The horse was still jumping around like crazy, almost on top of me as I was in the middle of the road. After that day, I thought I could never get back on again. It took me a couple months to get back on again and start messing with horses, even with the calm old lady horses. I still couldn't do it. I was too scared. Then throughout a couple of weeks trying to deny me, I was just like, you know what? I have God right here with me. I will be okay and better than ever. Look at me now. I just won reserve grand champion in Jim Connor my first year showing horses and was point guard on the eighth grade girls bas- basketball team and took the algebra one math class with straight A's. All thanks to God, Nico, and my wonderful parents. But my point is, you can really do anything and everything, all with God. And if you fall, he will pick you right back up again and give you even more courage and strength than ever before. I truly believe what Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hi, you probably know that my name is Annika. I've been going to this church ever since I was about two years old. As many of you know, the first year of my life or so was pretty rocky and scary, but I'm so glad to be a part of a church family that has been praying for me ever since I, the moment I was born. One of my favorite Bible verses is Psalms 18:2, which says, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Whenever I hear this verse, I know that I'm not alone. When I hear the words, my shield, and stronghold, it makes me realize that God is, will always be with me, protecting me. Sometimes I feel like I'm not good enough for God, but I know that God loves everyone, including me. When I was about six or seven, I invited Jesus into my heart. I believe I get a good news club. From that moment on, I knew that I wanted to follow Jesus with all of my being for the rest of my life. Going to Kids Blast played a big role in my faith. As well as the relationships I had formed with many of the people in this church. My great grandma has always played an important role in my life and in my faith journey, and I couldn't be more thankful for her. After I'm done with confirmation, I plan to go on to high school and from there on to go to college and become a preschool teacher or a daycare provider. I think that the Lord has led me to serve in little kids because I'm always surrounded by little ones, and I love spending time with them. I hope to continue to attend this church and remain in this community that I played such a vital role in with me growing my faith. I've learned so many things in confirmation, but the one thing that I always remember is that God is with me, even in the darkest of times. I will always remember that God is protecting me. Psalms 18.2 will always remind me of this.
Hi, my name is Lydia Burr. I chose the verses John 15, 5 and Joshua 1, 9. I always grew up in a church, and I asked Jesus into my life when I was around the age of 12. When I was 12, my mom and dad decided to get separated. During that time, I was very anxious about things, like where I was in my faith and in place in my life, my future with my parents, and where us kids would be living. While I was anxious, while I was anxious, I began to have panic attacks and constant worries. But while I was anxious, I constantly was in scripture trying to find strength and peace to comfort me. A verse that told me a lot was John 15, 5, which says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me I am, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I had actions I would do with myself to help me calm down when I was worried. Eventually, God and his scripture, along with family praying for me, got me through my anxiety. Now, I only occasionally get anxious and worried. But when I do get worried, I remember that God tells us in Joshua 1, 9, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For God, your, for Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. And that is why I don't get worried anymore. Since I follow Jesus, I hope that God not only helps me with my anxiousness, but everyone who needs him for, wait, him for guidance and support. Because of Joshua 1.9 saying, for the Lord is with you wherever you go, I also hope to remember that even when I feel alone, God is always there for me. I delight, oh, I'd like to thank everyone who prayed for me and with me and who made me who I am today. Family, friends, and more who helped and taught me to walk with him. Thank you. Okay, well, they sure did a wonderful job, didn't they? All right, well, I'm going to ask the students to come back up here just for a minute. And... <clears throat> So student says, your pastor and teacher, it is my prayer, I should say as one of their teachers, we, we know who their other teachers are, and I'm just one of them. So as your pastor and teacher, it is my prayer that these expressions of faith may provide the basis for the commitment of your life to Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. And so answering only for yourself and in perfect freedom to be silent if you cannot yet answer I now call upon you to respond to the following questions. Do you confess personal faith in Jesus Christ and desire with God's help to be his disciple? If so, say, I do. And do you believe with the church of Jesus Christ that the Bible, the Old and New Testaments, is the word of God and the only perfect rule for faith, doctrine, and conduct? telling the story of God and God's people in the past and guiding them today? If so, answer, I do. And as you continue in your life, do you intend to keep worshiping in Christ's church, listening to his word, and responding to his call according to your faith? If so, say, I do. Uh, so be it according to your faith. And we're going to have a little, um, I'm going to hand these out to you. Um, afterwards, they're going to come back up for a final prayer at the end. So um, we will pray for them at that time. So let's just give them a hand for the... God bless you. Thank you. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. God bless them. All right. Well, um, I am only going to share a brief word today, and because I feel like they've already kind of given the sermon today, right? Praise God for that. And you know, as we always tell them, confirmation is really just the beginning. It is not, confirmation is not graduation from church. 
it's really the beginning in their walk with the Lord. And it's really um, kind of, it's, I'm going to say it's one of their first steps as young adults, isn't it? Because they just keep growing, these kids. And, and this is a time when they're making their faith their own, and they're confirming their faith. And so we're just so proud of them, and we just thank God for them. And, but we also know this, that as much as we can do as, as a church, and, and Emily as youth pastor, and, and the, their teachers, as much as we try to do really the, the most important place for them to grow is in their families. And I think you heard that expressed in, in their speeches, that they're families. And so families, thank you for raising these wonderful young people who love the Lord and, and are serving him. We're just so thankful. And um, so today I'm just going to share this verse from uh, Matthew chapter 7, where Jesus says, Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. So you'll notice that Jesus, he didn't say if the storm comes or if the, the winds and rain comes. He says when they come. Because we all know that there's going to come a time in life when storms come, right? It's just they come in all kinds of different forms, but they will come. And that's just how life is, right? But we know that if we put Jesus first, if we build our, our life on the rock and on his word, we know that it's going to be okay. And we have a picture here of a, a lighthouse, I think, that is, love that picture. You see the little guy there? I don't know if you can see the little man in the doorway. That guy's crazy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I think he probably got wet, I think. But, um, you know, that, that lighthouse has a firm foundation. It was built on bedrock. And when the storm came, it weathered the storm. And what, other, what else can you say? You know, Jesus, if we put the Lord first in our life, if we build our life on Jesus Christ and his word, he's going to bring us through. And he's going to help us with whatever it is we face, whatever it is. It doesn't matter what it is that we face. And... Um, I'm not going to take the. T I'm going to shorten things a little bit here. But I was going to refer to. Um, I've been re reading through Second Chronicles in the Old Testament, and that shows us or gives us the history of some of the kings of Judah and Israel. And there was a king in the nation of Judah whose name was Asa, and fortunately Asa was a godly king. But during his reign there was this army that came, this, this Ethiopian army that came, and it was way bigger than his army. I mean, it was just way bigger. And we won't read all the details of it today, but let me just shorten it by saying that when that army came and they were about to wipe out the little nation of Judah and, and Asa and his army, Asa and the people of Judah, they cried out to God, and they said, God, help us. And... They trusted in God, and guess what? God helped them to defeat that army that was way bigger than they were. And not only did they win the victory, but then afterwards they got all the spoils. They got the blessing. And, and so, you know, the message there is that even when we go through trials, which we will go through, 
we need to call upon the Lord, and he's going to not only help us through, but he's going to somehow bless us through the trial. Okay, so think about that now. Now, some people in here are going through trials, right? But um, let me tell you this, that God is going to help you through, and there's going to be a blessing on the other side of it. Praise God for that. And if you build your life on Jesus Christ, to keep trusting in him, keep building on that foundation, and he's going to bring you through. But he, Jesus goes on, and he says, um, but anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come, and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. We have another picture here of, um, yeah, let's see it if somewhere. There it is. I think this was a house in Russia that was built on permafrost, or used to be permafrost. Now some of it has melted, and they didn't, they did not prepare the foundation properly on this house, as you can see. So what happened? It destroyed it, right? Totally wiped it out. And, and that's a picture, a visual picture of what happens when people don't build their life on Jesus Christ and on his word. <clears throat> it's a disaster. And... And it's not good. And, and now you might say, well, wait a minute. I know a whole lot of people that they're not building their life on Jesus Christ, and they seem to have pretty good lives. Well, there's a thing called the afterlife. <laughs> so it might, it might be good now, but there's a judgment. It is appointed unto man to die once and then face the judgment. And the foundation is not going to stand. And when we build our life on something other than God and his word. This is his instruction book for human beings. And I can tell you, and I, and I probably say it about every week, that over the years, and I've been doing this for some time, I have observed many, many people, many families, and those that build their life on Jesus Christ and his word. Let's just say I have never met to this day, I have never met someone that says, you know, Dan, I wish I never would have followed Jesus. Never heard that. Never heard it. Not once. And I've known a lot of people, okay? However, I have met many people that did not build their life on Christ. And their lives look a lot more like that house that in Russia, okay? So... I don't really have a whole lot more to say about that, but please build your life on Jesus. And um, the last thing I'll say is that, it, again, in the Bible, um, there was another king. I was going to contrast this other king. His name was King Jehoram. And King Jehoram was a king of Judah that did not worship the Lord. He turned away from God, and he introduced idolatry into his kingdom. And his, his whole reign was a disaster. And I'm not going to read the whole thing again, but chapter 21 of Second Chronicles, verse 20, I'll just read one verse. It says, at the end of his life, Jehoram was 32 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem eight years. No one was sorry when he died. They buried him in the city of David, but not in the royal cemetery. His whole thing just stunk, okay? And no one was even sad. I mean, that's a really sad tale there. Or it's not just a tale, it's a reality. And, and there you go. But if you build your life on the Lord, even when the storm comes, he's going to, to help you, and he's going to bless you. And so as we come now to Holy Communion, you know, I love Communion. Now, here's another thing about building your life on the foundation of Jesus Christ. You don't have to start when you're young. Now, it's better if you do start when you're young. 
And it's better if you don't go away from the Lord. It's going to save you a whole lot of trouble. I can guarantee you that. But, um, but the, the supernatural thing is that even if you're older, and you say, well, I, I didn't, I haven't even, you know, I'm older and, I, and I've not built my life on the Lord. Guess what? You can do it now. You can start today. And you can begin to build your life on Jesus Christ. And he's going to redeem your life. And so this is what Holy Communion is all about. It's, it's so wonderful. I love Holy Communion because in communion, we remember what Jesus Christ did for us. You see, every one of us, all the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. God is holy and perfect. In heaven, there's no sin. This is another reason why, you know, some, some people want to say today, like, oh, everyone goes to heaven. No, they don't, okay? <laughs> because in heaven, there's no lying. There's no stealing. There's no immorality. There's no uh, murder. There's no, you name it. Okay, it doesn't exist in heaven. In heaven, there it's perfect. And God does not abide with sin. That's why sin separates people from God. And the bad news is that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So we're not, no matter how nice you are or how much money you give to charity or support the Girl Scouts or what, well, maybe that's a bad example, but... I don't know where that came from. Anyway, just say that where are the Girl Scouts now? I don't know. God help us. Ho hopefully they're doing okay. Let's get back on track and say that, uh, that no matter how much nice, how nice you are, good you are, you're not worthy of heaven. Nobody is. Okay, don't feel bad because no one is. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But we're justified freely by his grace. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So the bad news is that we're, we're going to hell. And by the way, hell really is real, okay? It's real. It's not just for Hitler, okay? We all deserve hell because we're not worthy but the good news is, is that God doesn't want even one person going there. That's why he made a way to go to heaven. That's why he made a way for us to be saved. And he did that by sending his one and only son to be our substitute on the cross. Jesus Christ came to this earth from the glory of heaven, was born so humbly in that manger in Bethlehem. He grew up, went to the cross to, to pay for our sins, the price that we ourselves couldn't pay. He suffered in our place. He died. But as we, as we said in the Apostles' Creed, on the third day he rose again from the dead. And Jesus Christ conquered sin and death. And so as we come here to communion, we remember how Jesus Christ the bread is about the body of Christ and how Jesus allowed his body to be broken in our place. He took the suffering upon his body that should have been ours. And Jesus Christ shed his blood on the cross. And through his shed blood, there is forgiveness of sins. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And so as we come here to Holy Communion, it's a time to take the bread and the cup. And it's a time really to say, Lord, I want you to be the Lord of my life. Jesus Christ, I want you to be the foundation of my life. I want to build my life on you. And that's something that, that we need to, you know, I always, I always say this, that you know, you might have had an experience when you're younger or something where you received Christ, and that's wonderful. That's good. But there's sometimes when we need to, to recommit our lives to Christ. 
because it's just a good thing to do. And I believe that Holy Communion is a way to do that. Now, if you're visiting with us here today, you do not have to be an official member of United Covenant Church to take communion. But you do need to be a member of the church of Jesus Christ. How do you do that? Well, you do that by receiving Christ. If you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are free to come and take Holy Communion. And maybe coming up here and receiving communion is your way to receive him. But we're going to say a little prayer as we prepare for this. And we're just going to say a little prayer. So first of all, as we prepare to come up here, we are going to ask God to forgive us. If there's something in your life that you need to silently confess or admit to the Lord, and you can ask him to forgive your sins. Heavenly Father, we have all sinned and fallen short of your glory, but we confess to you, and Jesus Christ, we ask you, God, Father, we ask you to forgive us, and thank you for your grace to us. We receive your forgiveness. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So we're going to have um, a couple stations here. We're also going to have a station back there through those doors. But today we're going to have our, um, so I'm going to ask our servers to come on up here and get ready back there too. But um, we're going to have our confirmation. Um, our confirmants will be the first to come and receive communion as we celebrate and honor them today. Welcome to come when you're ready.
stand and sing with us the last song.
be seated one last time here. And we're going to um, invite our confirmation students up one more time. And um, parents and grandparents, I did not warn you in advance, but we would love for you, if you would be willing to come up, we're going to say a prayer of blessing on our students. So um, again, parents, grandparents, friends, whoever want to come, our interim youth pastor maybe, <laughs> Emily, I don't know if you are able to make it down here from the sound booth. Um, our teachers, Katie and Gretchen, if you could be here. <clears throat> As you can see, it takes a whole lot of people to raise godly young people. It takes a whole lot of support. But guess what? We're not in it alone. So maybe, maybe there's one last sermon there is that, folks, we're not... We don't follow Jesus just as lone rangers, right? We have the body of Christ around us to support us and help us. So just, uh, if you can lay your hands on them, audience, the congregation, if you can extend your hands in blessing, or pray this last blessing on our students. Heavenly Father, God, we just want to say thank you again for our young people. We just pray a holy blessing on them, Lord. And that what you began in them, you would bring to completion. We just ask that throughout their lives, Lord Jesus Christ, that they would follow you. That yes, they will build their lives on the firm foundation, which is Jesus Christ. And Lord, we say thank you. Bless their families, their parents, grandparents, other significant people in their lives. And so we just pray this blessing on them. In the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And so don't go anywhere because at this time I'm going to walk down there with the students and we're going to be out there and we're going to shake your hand when you come out. So welcome them. I mean, congratulate them. So students, let's head down there. And God bless you. Have a wonderful week.